It's so hot. Like way too hot. Heat. It's the best and worst part of summer. But today I want to give you some knowledge about what happens to your body and give you some hacks on how to stay safe and cool. It's grill time in New York City. Boy, do I love grilling because I am a master grillsmith. Something you didn't know about me. Who doesn't love summer picnics and barbecues? But there are health hazards that come along with this. The evidence on this is fairly strong, strong enough to the point that the World Cancer Research Fund actually instituted a warning saying you shouldn't eat burnt or charred foods frequently or on a regular basis. This is advice I can totally get behind. During the grilling process, there are harmful chemicals that are formed. Those harmful chemicals can lead to illnesses like cancer. Here are four hacks to keep your grilling experience as healthy as possible. Trim all the visible fat on the meats that you're gonna be grilling. The more visible fat you have, the more likely that your meat will char very easily and create more of those harmful chemicals we talked about. You wanna minimize the amount of smoke that touches your meat. The more you manipulate or the more you move around the meat on the grill, the more juice that's likely to seep down and create more smoke. And remember, the more smoke, the more chemicals, and that's no good for you. Also, once you're done grilling, make sure you clean out the grate to remove some of that stuck on fat and grease, which can further contribute to the chemical load. All that smoke isn't great for your lungs either. So if you're gonna use tools, use long-handed tools that will allow you to reach the grill without having your face directly over it. When you think about grilling, you're probably thinking meat. That's not always the case. You can grill vegetables or even fruits. Grab a skewer. Kebabs are a great way to mix in fruits and vegetables into your grilling routine. And remember, a plant-focused diet is a healthy diet. Oh my God, it's such a hot day today. I just need a little air conditioning to blow on me. Oh my God. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. The problem with air conditioning is when you walk in from a hot day and you're sweating, and you walk into a cold environment, you cool down your body way too quickly, and when that happens, the immune cells that actually fight off the infections in certain places of your body, like your nose or your throat, decrease because your body constricts those blood vessels and you get less blood flow, which means less immune protection. When you constrict your blood vessels, you're not getting blood flow, you're not getting healing nourishment to whatever region of your body that's exposed to the cold. For example, we all love having the air conditioner on at night to keep us cool, but when the air conditioner is blowing directly on your body or specifically one part of your body, like your neck, you're gonna overcool that region. That's gonna lead to blood vessel constriction, which will lead to less blood flow, less nourishment, and that's critical for areas like your neck, which have nerves, muscles in them. It's gonna lead them to malfunction. You're gonna wake up with a sore neck or a stiff neck. That's no good for anybody. If you're gonna walk into a cold environment, make sure you cool off a little bit first. If you're sweating, wipe off some of that sweat. It'll help decrease some of that blood constriction. If you're coming in from a pool or a beach and you're wet, get out of those wet clothes as fast as possible. Make sure when you're using your air conditioner, it's blowing away from you. It's meant for ambient air cooling, not direct cooling. It's even more important to stay hydrated in the summer. Ooh. Ah, Hydration is so important. Think about it. You can go days or even weeks without eating, but you can't go more than a few days without water. That should mean something to you. It's critical for maintaining good circulation, delivery of nutrients, removal of waste, and even thermal regulation. I often get the question of how many glasses a day should I drink? What's the optimal amount to stay hydrated? And generally speaking, there's no good answer for this that fits everybody. A good bit of advice that I do give to my patients is to look at their urine. Optimally, you wanna have straw colored urine. Not too light, not too yellow, really somewhere in between. Just make sure to not get caught up on this. If your urine is sometimes yellow and sometimes clear, that's totally fine. Your body's doing its job. Some people use thirst to gauge their level of hydration. And that's not a great idea. Once you feel thirst, that's a sign of mild dehydration. Hydrate before the thirst sets in. Have a water bottle with you at all times. No matter if you're going to the gym, hang out with your friends or to work, you should always have a water bottle. There's no excuse here. They make collapsible water bottles, bladder water bottles, backpack water bottles. Eat foods that naturally contain water. Strawberries, watermelon, cucumber. Dilute your juice. If you're gonna be drinking 100% juice, dilute it halfway with water. When you do that, it'll pass through your stomach quicker and get those electrolytes to you that much sooner. Going out for a jog on this beautiful sunny morning, but anytime you step out into the sun, you gotta get your sunblock on. Mel Gibson, Braveheart style. 
Unfortunately, the sun does do damage to your skin. Not only does it cause your skin to age earlier than it's supposed to because of wrinkles and dryness, but the UV rays are harmful in that they can cause skin cancer. There's more new skin cancer cases in the US than prostate, bone, breast, and colon cancer combined. The damage from UV rays can occur with just 15 minutes of direct sunlight exposure. Buy the highest SPF possible and make sure that it's broad spectrum coverage. There was a rumor going around saying that SPF 35 is just as good as 70, but that's not the case. It's only valid if you're applying it the perfect way, reapplying every two hours, putting the correct amount per specifications on the bottom, which most of us aren't doing. No sunblock is truly waterproof, and for it to be effective, you need to apply at least every two, three hours. Don't forget to apply sunblock to obscure and sensitive areas like the lips and the ears. They get burned just like any other part of our body. Shade is your best friend. While sunblock works great, the ultimate answer for sun protection is going in the shade or covering up. We gotta talk about one of the biggest problems in the summer and that's bugs. Just a pee. You have to use bug spray, keep them bugs off of you. Companies, even like AmeriCare, so someone that I'm partnered with, has a big campaign going on in Latin America for Zika prevention. And this is Zika prevention. This mosquito nets, long loose clothing, be smart. Be smart, use the spray, it's so easy. Ah. Just don't eat it like I did. Avoid perfume and sweet smelling beauty products. Those just attract all types of bugs, not just mosquitoes and ticks, but also bees. Use insect repellent with at least 20 to 30% DEET. The higher the concentration of DEET, the longer the product lasts. Wear long pants and long sleeve shirts. They don't have to be heavy, you just have to make sure the tick can't make contact with your skin. Plus, you'll get the added benefit of getting extra sun protection. Regardless of your clothing, after spending time outdoors in grassy or wooded areas, make sure to do a thorough tick check. Summer is my favorite season, but as you can tell, it does carry some health hazards along with it. If there's anything in this video you didn't quite understand or need more clarification on, leave me a comment down below. Definitely share this video with your friends and family to help them keep safe in the sun. Instagram fans. Today I want to give you a little knowledge about what happens to your body during the summer months and some gray hacks. Why gray hacks? There are health hazards that come along with both of these instances. Did I eat instances? It instances? Minimize the amount of smoke that touches your... Now it's, it's really becoming funny because I'm saying the amount of smoke that touches your meat. The more you manipulate or play with your meat, oh my god. So you wanna make sure that you're able to protect yourself and not increase your risk to getting one of these biting you.